Moving on, experts at the 7th Economic Forum have emphasized the need to reduce the cost of public administration, increasing productivity of sectors like agriculture, promote value addition as well as find alternative financing to substitute loans that are pushing the Ugandan economy into heavy indebtedness. A bird's view of the capital Kampala reveals a city on an upward trajectory of growth and studies done on the Ugandan economy classify it among the five fastest growing economies. And a look at the growth figures of the decade shows an average growth rate of 7.5%. However, the last 10 years from 2013 have been characterized by economic shocks, resilience and gradual recovery as Ugandans struggle to put food on the table. Even when the GDP of the country is growing fast each year and inflation back to below 5%, the country still remains challenged by unemployment, low exports and low productivity of the agriculture sector, among others that make some people uncomfortable. Through the killing of the QMAC by UNBS, all the small manufacturers are now out of business. Can you please listen to us and do something about it before we bury them? I find it very interesting when we, sit, we all sit here and pretend we don't see what is obvious everywhere. If you were to be asked, where are all the youths now? Making it worse is that Uganda is having an impossible trinity in the face of the depreciating shilling against the dollar, according to Dr. Elizabeth Kasekende, a researcher with the Bank of Uganda. If, for example, the central bank was to reduce the central bank rate, what that would do is it would mean that the rates abroad, the interest rates abroad, would be more lucrative for investors than the rates in Uganda, and that, will, that would lead to capital outflows, and therefore the exchange rate would depreciate. The question of alternative financing for government development projects became sticky, given that the World Bank froze all the new loan requests from Uganda. Now we can leave the World Bank, let's go to other alternative routes, China for instance. We have to be very careful here. We can see that China loans to Sub-Saharan Africa are declining. The IMF is still on board. Does the monetary policy have to overcompensate for the low productivity in order to keep inflation in the target? And if yes, what does this do to fiscal sustainability and to future growth? With answers to this question still lacking, experts have suggested some solutions. The alternative is simple, to use the painful but sustainable way, which is reducing unnecessary government expenditure. Senior officials at the Ministry of Finance have made serious commitments relevant to growing the Ugandan economy. We are not just focused on achieving high top-line growth, but growth that is inclusive, growth that is green. Hakim Wampamba, NBS, live at nine. Thank you very much, Hakim Wampama. Now, earlier on, we asked the public what they think of the speaker's directive uh, to the committee investigating the number plate uh, saga. Samson, what do you have for us from that? Well, I have a bunch to say, but what is important is what the viewers are saying and all, all that and much more after these messages. Brought to you by... We see you great. Katukuyambe Kukuse Samu. With APSA Business Banking. Speak to us about how we can help you get it done. That's Africanacity. That's APSA.